Methane, Wikipedia article audio Methane is a chemical compound with the chemical formula CH4. It is a group 14 hydride and the simplest alkane, and is the main constituent of natural gas. The relative abundance of methane on Earth makes it an attractive fuel, though capturing and storing it poses challenges due to its gaseous state under normal conditions for temperature and pressure. History Properties and Bonding Chemical Reactions Acid-Base Reactions Combustion Reactions with Halogens Uses Fuel Natural gas Liquefied natural gas Liquid methane rocket fuel Chemical feedstock Generation Geological roots Biological roots Industrial roots Power to methane Laboratory synthesis On Mars Occurrence Alternative sources Atmospheric methane Clathrates Anaerobic oxidation of methane Safety Extraterrestrial methane Natural methane is found both below ground and under the sea floor. When it reaches the surface and the atmosphere, it is known as atmospheric methane. The Earth's atmospheric methane concentration has increased by about 150% since 1750, and it accounts for 20% of the total radiative forcing from all of the long-lived and globally mixed greenhouse gases. Notes In November 1776, Methane was first scientifically identified by Italian physicist Alessandro Volta in the marshes of Lake Maggiore straddling Italy and Switzerland. Volta was inspired to search for the substance after reading a paper written by Benjamin Franklin about flammable air. Volta collected the gas rising from the marsh, and by 1778 had isolated the pure gas. He also demonstrated that the gas could be ignited with an electric spark. The name methane was coined in 1866 by the German chemist August Wilhelm von Hoffmann. The name was derived from methanol. Methane is a tetrahedral molecule with four equivalent CH bonds. Its electronic structure is described by four bonding molecular orbitals resulting from the overlap of the valence orbitals on C and H. The lowest energy MO is the result of the overlap of the 2's orbital on carbon with the in-phase combination of the 1's orbitals on the four hydrogen atoms. Above this energy level is a triply degenerate set of MOs that involve overlap of the 2p orbitals on carbon with various linear combinations of the 1's orbitals on hydrogen. The resulting 3 over 1 bonding scheme is consistent with photoelectron spectroscopic measurements. At room temperature and standard pressure, methane is a colorless, odorless gas. The familiar smell of natural gas as used in homes is achieved by the addition of an odorant, usually blends containing tert-butylthiol, as a safety measure. Methane has a boiling point of 164 degrees C at a pressure of 1 atmosphere. As a gas it is flammable over a range of concentrations in air at standard pressure. Solid methane exists in several modifications. Presently nine are known. Cooling methane at normal pressure results in the formation of methane I. This substance crystallizes in the cubic system. The positions of the hydrogen atoms are not fixed in methane I, i.e. methane molecules may rotate freely. Therefore, it is a plastic crystal. The primary chemical reactions of methane are combustion, 
steam reforming to singas, and halogenation. In general, methane reactions are difficult to control. Partial oxidation to methanol, for example, is challenging because the reaction typically progresses all the way to carbon dioxide and water even with an insufficient supply of oxygen. The enzyme methane monooxygenase produces methanol from methane, but cannot be used for industrial scale reactions. Like other hydrocarbons, methane is a very weak acid. Its pKa in DMSO is estimated to be 56. It cannot be deprotonated in solution, but the conjugate base with methyl lithium is known. A variety of positive ions derived from methane have been observed, mostly as unstable species in low-pressure gas mixtures. These include methenium or methyl cation CH+, 3, methane cation CH+, 4, and methanium or protonate methane CH+, 5. Some of these have been detected in outer space. Methanium can also be produced as diluted solutions from methane with superacids. Cations with higher charge, such as CH2+, 6 and CH3+, 7, have been studied theoretically and conjectured to be stable. Despite the strength of its CH bonds, there is intense interest in catalysts that facilitate CH bond activation in methane. Methane's heat of combustion is 55.5 mJ kg. Combustion of methane is a multiple step reaction. The following equations are part of the process, with the net result being The species M signifies an energetic third body, from which energy is transferred during a molecular collision. Formaldehyde is an early intermediate. Oxidation of formaldehyde gives the formal radical, which then give carbon monoxide. Any resulting H2 oxidizes to H2O or other intermediates. Finally, the CO oxidizes, forming CO2. In the final stages, energy is transferred back to other third bodies. The overall reaction rate is a function of the concentration of the various entities during the combustion process. The higher the temperature, the greater the concentration of radical species, and the more rapid the combustion process. Given appropriate conditions, methane reacts with halogens as follows. Where X is a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. This mechanism for this process is called free radical halogenation. It is initiated with UV light or some other radical initiator. A chlorine atom is generated from elemental chlorine, which abstracts a hydrogen atom from methane, resulting in the formation of hydrogen chloride. The resulting methyl radical, CH3, can combine with another chlorine molecule to give methyl chloride and a chlorine atom. This chlorine atom can then react with another methane molecule, repeating the chlorination cycle. Similar reactions can produce dichloromethane, chloroform, and, ultimately, carbon tetrachloride, depending upon reaction conditions and the chlorine to methane ratio. Methane is used in industrial chemical processes and may be transported as a refrigerated liquid. While leaks from a refrigerated liquid container are initially heavier than air due to the increased density of the cold gas, the gas at ambient temperature is lighter than air. Gas pipelines distribute large amounts of natural gas, of which methane is the principal component. Methane is used as a fuel for ovens, homes, water heaters, kills, automobiles, turbines, and other things. It combusts with oxygen to create heat, as demonstrated by a British inventor in a 1974 film of the National Film Board of Canada. 
Methane is important for electricity generation by burning it as a fuel in a gas turbine or steam generator. Compared to other hydrocarbon fuels, methane produces less carbon dioxide for each unit of heat released. At about 891 kJ slash mole, methane's heat of combustion is lower than any other hydrocarbon but the ratio of the heat of combustion to the molecular mass shows that methane, being the simplest hydrocarbon, produces more heat per mass unit than other complex hydrocarbons. In many cities, methane is piped into homes for domestic heating and cooking. In this context it is usually known as natural gas, which is considered to have an energy content of 39 megajoules per cubic meter, or 1000 BTU per standard cubic foot. Methane in the form of compressed natural gas is used as a vehicle fuel and is claimed to be more environmentally friendly than other fossil fuels such as gasoline slash petrol and diesel. Research into adsorption methods of methane storage for use as an automotive fuel has been conducted. Liquefied natural gas is natural gas that has been converted to liquid form for ease of storage or transport. Liquefied natural gas takes up about 1-600th the volume of natural gas in the gaseous state. It is odorless, colorless, non-toxic and non-corrosive. Hazards include flammability after vaporization into a gaseous state, freezing, and asphyxia. The liquefaction process involves removal of certain components, such as dust, acid gases, helium, water, and heavy hydrocarbons, which could cause difficulty downstream. The natural gas is then condensed into a liquid at close to atmospheric pressure by cooling it to approximately 162 degrees C. LNG achieves a higher reduction in volume than compressed natural gas so that the energy density of LNG is 2.4 times greater than that of CNG or 60% that of diesel fuel. This makes LNG cost efficient to transport over long distances where pipelines do not exist. Specially designed cryogenic sea vessels or cryogenic road tankers are used for its transport. LNG, when it is not highly refined for special uses, is principally used for transporting natural gas to markets, where it is regasified and distributed as pipeline natural gas. It is also beginning to be used in LNG-fueled road vehicles. For example, trucks in commercial operation have been achieving payback periods of approximately four years on the higher initial investment required in LNG equipment on the trucks and LNG infrastructure to support fueling. However, it remains more common to design vehicles to use compressed natural gas. As of 2002, the relatively higher cost of LNG production and the need to store LNG in more expensive cryogenic tanks had slowed widespread commercial use. In a highly refined form, liquid methane is used as a rocket fuel. Though methane has been investigated for decades, no production methane engines have yet been used on orbital space flights. Methane is reported to offer the advantage over kerosene of depositing less carbon on the internal parts of rocket motors, reducing the difficulty of reuse of boosters. Since the 1990s, a number of Russian rockets using liquid methane have been proposed. One 1990s Russian engine proposal was the RD-192, a methane slash LOX variant of the RD-191. In 2005, U.S. companies, Orbitech and XCOR Aerospace, developed a demonstration liquid oxygen slash liquid methane rocket engine and a larger 7,500 pound force thrust engine in 2007 for potential use as the CEV lunar return engine, before the CEV program was later cancelled.
More recently the American private space company SpaceX announced in 2012 an initiative to develop liquid methane rocket engines, including initially the very large Raptor rocket engine. Raptor is being designed to produce 1,900 knots of thrust with a vacuum-specific impulse of 375 seconds and a sea-level ISP of 330 seconds and began component-level testing in 2014. In February 2014, the Raptor engine design was shown to be of the highly efficient and theoretically more reliable full-flow staged combustion cycle type, where both propellant streams oxidizer and fuel are completely in the gas phase before they enter the combustion chamber. Prior to 2014, only two full-flow rocket engines had ever progressed sufficiently to be tested on test stands, but neither engine completed development or flew on a flight vehicle. In 2016, a development Raptor engine was tested. In October 2013, the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, a state-owned contractor for the Chinese space program, announced that it had completed a first ignition test on a new LOX slash methane rocket engine. No engine size was provided. Mercury the tenuous atmosphere contains trace amounts of methane, Venus the atmosphere contains a large amount of methane from 60 km to the surface according to data collected by the Pioneer Venus Large Probe Neutral Mass Spectrometer. Moon traces are outgassed from the surface. In September 2014, another American private space company, Blue Origin, publicly announced that they were into their third year of development work on a large methane rocket engine. The new engine, the Blue Engine 4, or B4, has been designed to produce 2,400 kilonewtons of thrust. While initially planned to be used exclusively on a Blue Origin proprietary launch vehicle, it will now be used on a new United Launch Alliance engine on a new launch vehicle that is a successor to the Atlas V. EULA indicated in 2014 that they will make the maiden flight of the new launch vehicle no earlier than 2019. One advantage of methane is that it is abundant in many parts of the solar system and potentially could be harvested on the surface of another solar system body or titan, providing fuel for a return journey. By 2013, NASA's Project Morpheus had developed a small restartable LOX slash methane rocket engine with 5,000 pounds force thrust and a specific impulse of 321 seconds suitable for in space applications, including landers. Small LOX slash methane thrusters 515 pounds force were also developed suitable for use in a reaction control system. Space News is reporting in early 2015 that the French space agency CNES is working with Germany and a few other governments and will propose a LOX slash methane engine on a reusable launch vehicle by mid-2015, with flight testing unlikely before approximately 2026. Although there is great interest in converting methane into useful or more easily liquefied compounds, the only practical processes are relatively unselective. In the chemical industry, methane is converted to synthesis gas, a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, by steam reforming. This endergonic process utilizes nickel catalysts and requires high temperatures, around 700-1100 degrees C. Related chemistries are exploited in the Haber-Bosch synthesis of ammonia from air, which is reduced with natural gas to a mixture of carbon dioxide, water, and ammonia. Methane is also subjected to free radical chlorination in the production of chloromethanes, although methanol is a more typical precursor. Other commercially viable processes that use methane as a chemical feedstock include 
the catalytic oxidation of methane into methanol based on the oxidative coupling of methane, and the direct reaction of methane with sulfur trioxide to produce methane sulfonic acid. There are two main routes for geological methane generation, organic, and inorganic. Thermally generated methane, is referred to as thermogenic, originating from deeper sedimentary strata. Thermogenic methane formation occurs due to the breakup of organic matter, forced by elevated temperatures and pressures. This type of methane is considered to be the primary methane type in sedimentary basins, and from an economical perspective the most important source of natural gas. Thermogenic methane components are generally considered to be relic. Generally, formation of thermogenic methane, can occur through organic matter breakup, or organic synthesis. Both ways can involve microorganisms but may also occur inorganically. The involved anaerobic and aerobic processes can also consume methane, with and without microorganisms. The more important source of methane at depth is abiotic. Abiotic means that the methane formation took place involving inorganic compounds, without biological activity magmatic or created at low temperatures and pressures through water rock reactions. Naturally occurring methane is mainly produced by microbial methanogenesis. This multi-step process is used by microorganisms as an energy source. The net reaction is. The final step in the process is catalyzed by the enzyme coenzyme b transferase. Methanogenesis is a form of anaerobic respiration used by organisms that occupy landfill, ruminants, and the guts of termites. It is uncertain whether plants are a source of methane emissions. There are many technological methane production methods. Methane created from biomass in industrial plants via biological route is called biogas. A more synthetic method to produce methane is hydrogenating carbon dioxide through the Sabatier process. Methane is also a side product of the hydrogenation of carbon monoxide in the fischer tropsch process, which is practiced on a large scale to produce longer chain molecules than methane. Example of large-scale coal to methane gasification is the Great Plains Synfuels plant, started in 1984 in Beulah, North Dakota as a way to develop abundant local resources of low-grade lignite, a resource that is otherwise very hard to transport for its weight, ash content, low calorific value and propensity to spontaneous combustion during storage and transport. Methane as natural gas has been so abundant that synthetic production of it has been limited to special cases and as of 2016 covers only minor fraction of the methane used. Power to methane is a technology that uses electrical power to produce hydrogen from water by electrolysis and uses the Sabatier reaction to combine hydrogen with carbon dioxide to produce methane. As of 2016, this is mostly under development and not in large-scale use. Theoretically, the process could be used as a buffer for excess and off-peak power generated by highly fluctuating wind generators and solar arrays. The conversion efficiency of power to methane is 49.65% and full power methane power cycle is 30.38%. Methane can be produced by the destructive distillation of acetic acid in the presence of soda lime or similar. Acetic acid is decarboxylated in this process. Methane can be prepared from aluminium carbide by reaction with water or strong acids. It is also made by reducing a solution of methanol and concentrated hydrochloric acid with iron powder, giving water and ferrous chloride as byproducts. 
Methane has been proposed as a possible rocket propellant on future Mars missions due in part to the possibility of synthesizing it on the planet by in situ resource utilization. An adaptation of the Sabatye methanation reaction may be used with a mixed catalyst bed and a reverse water gas shift in a single reactor to produce methane from the raw materials available on Mars utilizing water from the Martian subsoil and carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere. Methane could also be produced by a non-biological process called serpentinization involving water, carbon dioxide, and the mineral olivine, which is known to be common on Mars. Methane was discovered and isolated by Alessandro Volta between 1776 and 1778 when studying marsh gas from Lake Maggiore. It is the major component of natural gas, about 87% by volume. The major source of methane is extraction from geological deposits known as natural gas fields with coal seam gas extraction becoming a major source. It is associated with other hydrocarbon fuels, and sometimes accompanied by helium and nitrogen. Methane is produced at shallow levels by anaerobic decay of organic matter and reworked methane from deep under the Earth's surface. In general, the sediments that generate natural gas are buried deeper and at higher temperatures than those that contain oil. Methane is generally transported in bulk by pipeline in its natural gas form, or LNG carriers in its liquefied form, few countries transport it by truck. Apart from gas fields, an alternative method of obtaining methane is via biogas generated by the fermentation of organic matter including manure, wastewater sludge, municipal solid waste, or any other biodegradable feedstock, under anaerobic conditions. Rice fields also generate large amounts of methane during plant growth. Methane hydrates slash clathrates are a potential future source of methane. Cattle belch methane accounts for 16% of the world's annual methane emissions to the atmosphere. One study reported that the livestock sector in general produces 37% of all human-induced methane. Early research has found a number of medical treatments and dietary adjustments that help slightly limit the production of methane in ruminants. A 2009 study found that at a conservative estimate, at least 51% of global greenhouse gas emissions were attributable to the life cycle and supply chain of livestock products, meaning all meat, dairy, and by-products, and their transportation. More recently, a 2013 study estimated that livestock accounted for 44% of human-induced methane and 14.5% of human-induced greenhouse gas emissions. Many efforts are underway to reduce livestock methane production and trap the gas to use as energy. Paleoclimatology research published in Current Biology suggests that flatulence from dinosaurs may have warmed the Earth. Methane is created near the Earth's surface, primarily by microorganisms by the process of methanogenesis. It is carried into the stratosphere by rising air in the tropics. Uncontrolled buildup of methane in the atmosphere is naturally checked although human influence can upset this natural regulation by methane's reaction with hydroxyl radicals formed from singlet oxygen atoms and with water vapor. It has a net lifetime of about 10 years, and is primarily removed by conversion to carbon dioxide and water. In addition, there is a large amount of methane in methane clathrates in the ocean floors as well as the Earth's crust. In 2010, methane levels in the Arctic were measured at 1,815 mol slash mole a level over twice as high as at any time in the 400,000 years prior to the Industrial Revolution. Historically, 
methane concentrations in the world's atmosphere have ranged between 300 and 400 mol slash mole during glacial periods commonly known as ice ages, and between 600 and 700 mol slash mole during the warm interglacial periods. Recent research suggests that the Earth's oceans are a potentially important new source of Arctic methane. Methane is an important greenhouse gas with a global warming potential of 34, compared to County 2 over a 100-year period, and 72 over a 20-year period. The Earth's atmospheric methane concentration has increased by about 150% since 1750, and it accounts for 20% of the total radiative forcing from all of the long-lived and globally mixed greenhouse gases. Methane is essentially insoluble in water, but it can be trapped in ice forming a similar solid. Significant deposits of methane clathrate have been found under sediments on the ocean floors of Earth at large depths. Estimates consider up to 15,000 gigatons of carbon may be stored in the form of clathrates in the ocean floor, not accounting for abiotic methane, a relatively newly discovered source of methane, formed below the ocean floor, in the earth crust. It has been suggested, that today's methane emission regime from the ocean floor, is potentially similar to that during the PETM. Arctic methane release from permafrost and methane clathrates is an expected consequence and further cause of global warming. There is a group of bacteria that drive methane oxidation with nitrite as the oxidant, the anaerobic oxidation of methane. Methane is non-toxic, yet it is extremely flammable and may form explosive mixtures with air. Methane is violently reactive with oxidizers, halogen, and some halogen-containing compounds. Methane is also an asphyxiant and may displace oxygen in an enclosed space. Asphyxia may result if the oxygen concentration is reduced to below about 16% by displacement, as most people can tolerate a reduction from 21% to 16% without ill effects. The concentration of methane at which asphyxiation risk becomes significant is much higher than the 5-15% concentration in a flammable or explosive mixture. Methane off-gas can penetrate the interiors of buildings near landfills and expose occupants to significant levels of methane. Some buildings have specially engineered recovery systems below their basements to actively capture this gas and vent it away from the building. Methane gas explosions are responsible for many deadly mining disasters. A methane gas explosion was the cause of the Upper Big Branch coal mine disaster in West Virginia on April 5, 2010, killing 29. Methane has been detected or is believed to exist on all planets of the solar system and most of the larger moons. With the possible exception of Mars, it is believed to have come from abiotic processes.